So we get the tax returns, we analyze the tax returns, come back to them and say, listen, here's the deal. In the one hour that we spent analyzing your tax return, okay, so the bill on three million between the three of them at 37, we're about a million dollars in taxes, okay? Let's rough numbers, about a million dollars, okay? We were able to take that million in one hour down to about $200,000, okay? Hey there, peeps. This is Michelle Nedelak. Thank you for listening to the show. I would love if you could give us your opinion on how you felt about the show, your experience that you have in regards to what we've been talking about. I am having an absolute blast, but your input is like dynamite on that explosion. So give us your input. We'd love to hear from you. Any questions, comments, concerns, give us everything you got. We love it. Thanks. I hope you're having an awesome day. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by success. Sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Sex desire is the most powerful of human desires. When driven by this desire, men develop keenness of imagination, courage, willpower, persistence, and creative ability unknown to them at other times. So strong and impelling is the desire for sexual contact that men freely run the risk of life and reputation to indulge in. When harnessed and redirected along other lines, this motivating force maintains all of its attributes of keenness of imagination, courage, etc which may be used as powerful creative forces in literature, art, or in any other profession or calling, including, of course, the accumulation of riches. Napoleon Hill. Hey there, peeps. Welcome to the Little Blue Pill for Business podcast, where it's all about getting it up and keeping it up. And of course, we're talking about revenue and profit. So I interview some of the hottest people in the industry that are blowing and going to help you get in on some action. So if you like a little tongue in cheek and not just physically, you're in the right place. Today, we are jumping in bed with none other than the gorgeous Shauna, the tax goddess. <laughs> Welcome, honey. How are you doing today? Thank you. I'm doing good. I'm super excited. Today is definitely a day, so I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Excellent. So for those of you who don't know, we are recording this on Valentine's Day, and I am super stoked. And Sean is looking totally hot and red. Even got complimented called the Aphrodite. Like, it's definitely a, a fantastic thing to hear first thing in the morning. No arguments. Right? So give everybody a highlight of how do you get paid to be a goddess? And <laughs> oh my, <laughs> I think our brains both went in a totally alternate direction. And there we go. Oh my. There you go. Um, yes. So I am technically, I am a tax goddess. So my job is to help people legally reduce their taxes by using above board tax strategies. So I do think it's very sexy because of course we, I think our average right now is $142,691 a year per person in tax drop. So um, I think that's pretty sexy. I think it's pretty cool. All right. So, Who doesn't yes. want that kind of cash laying around <laughs> uh, on Valentine's day? I would spread that shit all over the bed and yeah. I so We're doing Scrooge McDuck, right? Dive exactly. into the money. I'm all in. I love it. I love it. I'm a sexy version of Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Duck. Mrs. Duck. There you go. <laughs> or Daisy. We're going on a trip. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. So let's back up. About how did you get into taxes of all things? And how did you become the goddess of them? Oh. Oh, the story. All right. Well, so long story short, I actually started off in astrophysics. Okay. So not. Hey, what? Right. No, stop. <laughs> so what is long story short? What? I started in astrophysics. Who says that? Uh, hi, a goddess does. I'll look <laughs> um, I was a star goddess and now I'm a tax goddess. Um, yeah, very, very long story short, astrophysics. Okay. Um, I always wanted to work for JPL, Jet Propulsion Labs. That was my dream. That was the goal. I was a total Trekkie when I was a kid, like all, all over it. Okay. Um, well, I get to basically like my second year in college and my mom, who is my goddess, okay, uh, she has been business all of her life. She, she's a CPA, um, she's an MBA, you know, all these things. And she's kind of looking at me going, how did I end up with a daughter in science? Like, how, where did that come from? You know, very odd. 
And so she said, okay, well, so tell me, you know, what, what is it that you love about astrophysics? Like why astrophysics? Because it's a very specialized kind of thing. You can't really take that into multiple industries. Like what, why? And of course, Star Trek, right? I'm, I'm all over it, right? And I was like, oh, but I want to be data and I want to build those people and androids. And like, this, this was the thing. And realized this was like, oh, geez, how old am I? I don't know, 25 years ago. Okay, long time ago. So she said, okay, well, listen, no problem. If this is your dream, this is your passion. Let's go talk to the dean of the college, okay? And find out, so what does it take? Like, really, really, what do you have to do to get to where you want to go? I'm like, mm, okay, cool. You know, little, little 18, 19-year-old child. I'm like, all right, this is, sounds like a plan. So now you have to understand, my mom is German, okay? And she was raised in Germany. So the European sense of uh, politeness and etiquette and all of these kinds of things. Okay, this, this will be important here in a minute. So we set up a meeting with this guy, okay? We show up, beautiful building, you know, the red brick with the green ivy growing all over it, and the clock tower, you know, everything you think about, like the old world sciences, this kind of thing. We show up to this meeting. The lights in his office are off, off, okay? When you walk in, so you walk, it's kind of like a long, skinny office, and there's a desk, okay? And there's a big chair, but the chair is backwards. So we walk in, and the chair is like, the back of the chair is facing us. And so my mom kind <clears> of, <throat> you know, like, Hello, like we're here, whatever. This man does not turn around for 45 minutes of a meeting. He's talking, we can see the top of his head in the chair. He's talking to us with his back to us, will not turn around, okay? Um, we, my mom starts asking very valid questions. How many years <clears throat> will it take for her to become a goddess of the stars? Like, how, you know, how will this work? Well, you know, come to find out after 10 to 15 years, maybe you get a PhD, maybe you get in JPL. You have to work like a dog, right? No summers off. And I love travel. I've, I've been to 67 countries and counting. Travel was important to me. All the, can't travel. You don't make a whole lot of money, right? And I get it. If you're passionate, money's not the thing, but like money pays the bills, right? So money's got to be in there. So anyway, so we leave this meeting. And I mean, how rude, how rude. How rude. Like I haven't even seen that in a movie. <laughs> oh my God. In real life. How rude. Real oh life, real life. And so my mom, we walk out and she's like, I, I mean, does that sound exciting? Everything you described, does that sound exciting to you? I'm like, no, I mean, I love the subject and I still do now. I drive out and I live in Arizona, drive out to the middle of the desert and go hang out with people with these huge telescopes and look at the stars. Like, I love that stuff, but is this what I want to do with the rest of my, no. So of course, my mom, being the smart lady she is, says, well, let's go to the business college. You know, you're good with math and numbers. Why don't we just, you know, we'll just go check it out, right? Now, good or bad, if you haven't been able to tell, I am a CPA, okay? And <laughs> everyone tells me that there is no way you're a CPA. You're lying. You actually have a personality, okay? It's you're way too much fun, girl. <laughs> way too much fun to be a CPA. No, no possible way. So we go to the business college, right? All glass, big metal building, tons of energy and people and they're moving and everything's great. Long story short, ended up in the business college, okay? So undergrad accounting and finance, get to my senior year and I go back to my mom and I said, mom, I can't stand it. This is the most boring thing I've ever done in my life. It's all about recording history. I hate this. I would rather go back and be, you know, 15 years to get a PhD or whatever and, and do what I love. And she said, well, just, just one minute. Have you tried a tax class, right? Which I had not to that point. And I said, well, what difference is that going to make? And she said, listen, tax is all about changing what you do, changing the rules to get the outcome you want. And I said, all right, well, listen, I'm, I'm almost done. I'm, I'm a senior, like I'm almost graduate, whatever. Let me go take this tax class. Of course, hats off to mom. She was right. Of course, moms know their daughters, right? I took tax, I fell in love because it's all about changing the rules to get what you want or working within the rules to change what you want, to change your circumstances, to get what you want. And I love it because it's effectively like playing a giant game of chess. You have X, Y, Z pieces and you have a set of rules. Like you can't go out of bounds because the IRS will throw you in jail. So we're not, we're not doing that, right? But within the set of rules, how do you get the goal of Reducing taxes, making people happy, giving them the cash flow so they can go buy a boat or fund retirement or pay for the kids' colleges, like whatever it is. And so from there, of course, I kind of fell down the rabbit hole of tax, you know, so CPA, so accounting finance, then CPA, then master's in tax, then certified tax coach, certified tax uh, preparer, then certified tax strategist. All of that to say, 
I am now ranked in the top three out of 660,000 CPAs to do what I do. So yeah, that's that's where the goddess comes in. <laughs> so anyway. Leave it to you to find the rebellious root too. <laughs> <laughs> to yeah, that's it. being a redhead, honey, right? I mean, you know, I know this is this is a redhead thing. What are you gonna do? Right. So I absolutely love it. So what would you say is your favorite part of your job now? Oh, for me, it's always been education. I love educating people, right? Um, getting that little that that look on an entrepreneur's face where they get that little light bulb, like I, I can write off my kids and my dog and my Rolex really like right. yeah all day let's do it right that that um seeing somebody get as excited about what we do as i am mm -hmm. it makes my heart melt so right yeah i have been telling people for years years and years and years like come on people if you have that expense figure out how to make it a write-off and everybody is going oh, okay off your dog you can't write off your dog i'm like okay if i owned a, a trailer company or a storage yep. unit and i had dogs as my security would i be able to write them off yes of course okay so and do difference. that <laughs> no, no difference that. and it's exactly what you know using the chess pieces you have to get what mm -hmm. you want and you have to come at it from this this alternative viewpoint right you can't come at it from the black and white and here are the rules and here's the box you mm -hmm. have to think outside the lines to be able to get what you want. And that's really where most, and I love CPAs. I'm a CPA. We need people that just file the taxes. I love those people. Okay. But they're not going to be able to help you with strategy. It's exactly. just not how the brain works. Two totally right. different things. So talk to me about the black and white and in the, in the middle, because I think a lot of people think that taxes is a square and half of it is black and half of it is white. And you live in the white half of the box. And it's like, no, there is a sliver of white and there's a sliver <laughs> of black and the majority yeah. of the box is gray. Talk 100%. to me. I love it. So we we call this concept the aggression scale. Okay. Zero to 10. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, you I got live it. on the aggression scale. Aggression scale. <laughs> uh, so do I, but we'll count where the black is and we'll count where the white is. So, so zero to 10. Okay. Zero meaning the government never calls never ever. Okay, mm -hmm. but you're leaving a ton of money on the table, right? Hundred thousand, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ten meaning we're all going to jail because that's yeah. tax fraud, right? <laughs> like they, they don't like that. Governments yeah. don't tend to like that. Now, I always use Al Capone as my example. I was going to say, you know, you're in the black zone if you have two sets of books. <laughs> yeah, what is that? It's like a nine. That's like an Al Capone. So, so a ten is we're going to jail, flat yeah. out going to jail. Right? You haven't paid your bill. You've run away from the government, and they are hunting you down. Like mm -hmm. this is ten. You're going to jail. Okay. A nine is Al Capone. Okay. So you're doing bad stuff, and you're hoping you don't get caught. But if they catch you, you're going to jail. Right? Like it, it's a nine. Okay. An eight is the highest that I will go as a CPA. Right? Because mm -hmm. listen. All above board, all legal. You may get a call from the government saying, why did you do what you did? Like, explain that. Show us the backup. Show us the court cases. Show us all the details. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to have to go through the pain of an audit. Okay. But you have all the backup. You have all the details. You have all these things. Mm -hmm. So one of the most important things that I always tell people is, listen, you have to get this aggression scale number for two people, for you and your spouse, right? For, for mm -hmm. your family. Okay. Okay. And you have to get it from your professionals because if you're a level seven, eight as an entrepreneur, but your CPA, your chartered accountant is a negative three, which is what most people tell me they think their CPA chartered accountant is, is this negative three. Um, they're never going to bring you the strategies that you want as a seven or eight, right? So you've mm -hmm. got to have a matching team, right? right. Even, Even if you're in a five, dude, it's like, if it pertains to your business, your business coach is right off. <laughs> 100%. Period. Ordinary, necessary, and reasonable. Those are yeah. the three terms that always come up. Do you need this? Do you need a business coach to make more money? Yeah. Okay. Um, is it reasonable? Like, are they charging you a million dollars an hour? Probably not. Right? I mean, maybe if you're making that kind of money, <laughs> let them charge a million dollars an hour. Like, we're in, <laughs> right? But ordinary, necessary, and reasonable. And those are the three key words that the governments tend to look at and say, well, okay, is this ordinary, necessary, reasonable? And if it is for the business you're doing and for whatever it is, generally, if the government makes more money, so you having a business coach helps you make more money, gives you more time, gives you more freedom to make more money. 
if the government gets a bigger cut of the money you just made, everybody's happy, right? So now in Canada, and I don't think a lot of people realize this, is if you make under half a million dollars in profit, you're at eleven percent profitability. But if you're over half a million, then you're at, you know, up I think twenty eight percent. They yep. want you at a 28% tax bracket. They Amazing. want you to make money. Amazing. Amazing. I'm pretty sure all of the governments just print money all the time and they kind of need a way to collect that back. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Love it. I, Love it. I, and I was so excited. Yeah, you made me wet. I was so excited to meet you because it nothing drives me nuts more than when... You're like, okay, this is how write-offs work. This is what you do. And then they talk to their accountant. Their accountant's at a minus three. And they're like, nope, you can't do that. And it's like, yeah, you can. And in fact, yep. let's go back to the audit. Worst case scenario, you get audited. I yep. loved getting audited because I was the one that was like, okay, well, what about this? And what about that? And how does this work? And how does that work? And I'm like, am I driving you nuts yet? And she goes, no, actually, this is awesome. Most people are afraid of us and they like leave the room as much yes. as possible. I'm in there and I'm like a dirty shirt going, this is awesome. It's free education. I don't yes. have to read the freaking book. Have you read that book? That book I, is I have. Oh I have, <laughs> but most people will not. Yeah. Uh, no, I love it. And you know what? You bring up an excellent point. People are terrified. And, you know, I don't think everybody kind of realizes th these people are human. Okay. Yes, they have a job to do. Everybody's got a job to do. Okay. So don't go into the nine. Don't do Al Capone. Don't be in the black. Like, don't be doing those things unless that's what you choose to do. Right. Like actually choose to do. Don't do that. They will tell you, the government workers will tell you, hey, you really need to be tracking your miles this way or looking at it from that perspective or look at it this, get that free education. I, I Brilliant. I'm in love with it, right? But people are terrified. They think, I've literally had people tell me, I, I didn't pay my taxes on the deadline. Are they going to swap my house? I'm like, honey, they don't have time or bandwidth or resources to come swap your house for one day that you didn't pay. Like, chill out, okay? Um <laughs> It, it fascinates me. Now, on the other side, you know, we have had clients that, oh, yeah, I made like, we had one guy, what was it, $25 million in crypto gains, and then he bounced the country. And I'm like, yeah, the IRS called us and said, do you know where this person is? <laughs> we don't, <laughs> but good luck. You know, I mean, there, there are people doing bad things too. So just don't be one of those people. Okay. So, yeah. Well, and, and crypto is a fun one. Um, because the rules of it, because it is digital, and so you're you're not in the same position as realized capital, <laughs> and then the taxes are just yeah. fun. Anything you want to mention on that without going too down far oh, down that geez. rabbit hole? Yeah, because that's that's a massive rabbit hole. Yeah, the the right. biggest thing that I can mention here really is that every professional has their industries that they are good at. <laughs> I was okay. gonna say, just stick around the rim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, a lot. I don't oh. like this show. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, no, really, every professional has the areas that they are experts at. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, I will not work on nonprofits. I, ju I just won't. I don't know anything about nonprofits, right? So, like, you don't want to work with me if you are a nonprofit, right? Um, there are certain people that ex that are experts in crypto. So mm -hmm. if you've got, you know, if you're talking 100 or $200 worth of gain in crypto, like whatever, your normal CPA should be able to read the rules and do the thing. But if you're mm -hmm. talking $25 million gain in crypto, you better be working with an expert, right? Mm -hmm. So, I, and, I, and I hold this true in any industry. If you're in manufacturing, make sure that your team understands manufacturing, right? Like, you don't be working with, this is one of the biggest flaws that we see. Um, you started your business, okay? And when you first started, you were making $1,000. Okay. And so you were working with your local CPA or local chartered account, or whatever. And, you know, they came back to you and they're like, yeah, okay, I can handle this. It's a thousand dollars. It's whatever. Well, now it's been 10 years. You now have a staff of 50 people. You're making 3 million a year. Okay. That same team, that same CPA, that same chartered accountant may not have the bandwidth, the knowledge, the history, the ability to help you as your business modifies and morphs and changes. You need a team that knows what they're doing in that level, in that industry, in all those areas. So um, I I never want to tell somebody leave your current CPA that you've been with for 20 years or whatever, right? Uh, I think they should be on your advisory board, but I don't think they should be your primary point of contact as you get bigger, as you get more complicated. You need somebody that specializes in what you do. So 
Nice. Let, and let's talk about team because I think that it's super important for people at, at certain points to be able to get their team together. Um, you know, it's totally different to just have a bookkeeper and go, oh, okay, yeah, I give my receipts to my bookkeeper and that's awesome. But <laughs> no, no, heart attack on this end. No, talk well, anyway. to me. Yes. Well, I, I think um, a lot of business owners just don't understand the differences. Like what should they expect from these different professionals, right? Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I've told so many people lately, go to ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT, what should I expect from a good professional level bookkeeper or a good professional CPA or chartered accountant or a tax strategist? Like what should I expect from my financial advisor, my lawyer? What should I be expecting as a business owner from these professionals? Um, if you look at just that one little subsection, right, your bookkeeper, your accountant, and then your tax strategist, okay, your, your bookkeeper's job is to handle the day-to-day, -day. pay the bills, collect the bills, collect the money, make deposits, like that's their day-to-day -day kind of deal, okay? You may even have some admin or some other people helping you with that, fine, okay? Their job is not to give you strategy. It's not to help you make business decisions. Their job is to provide you numbers so that you and your <clears throat> team can now make business decisions, okay? So your accountant, your chartered CPA, CA, whatever it is, right? Your accountant's job is to now know a higher level of stuff and to work with the other advisors on your team. So your business coach, your financial planner, your lawyer, your real estate broker, like whoever it is that is in your team for what you do, it's their job kind of to be the quarterback, to help gather all these pieces of information to help you make decisions, right? Now, one of the biggest problems that we see here is that some accountants get very uh, protective, right? Well, I don't want anybody else talking to my client or seeing my client or whatever. Why? In, in my mind, that means they are not being a fiduciary to you. They are more worried about losing you as a client than doing what is right for you. And as accountants, as CPAs, charge accountants, whatever, right? Our job is to be your fiduciary, to do what is right for you, not what is right for us. And I think that gets um, misconstrued sometimes. And, and, and the, the taxpayers, the, the business owners, don't necessarily know that if your CPA is not looking up for your best interests, it's time to leave, period. And if that means they're not willing to hold meetings with your business coach or your financial advisor or your lawyer so that they can learn more and understand who you are as a client, it's time to leave. It's time to find somebody who will do that. You know, as, as a strategist, we see this all the time, right? Clients will call us because they want to reduce their taxes. One of the first questions we ask is, great, tell us your aggression scale, CPA's aggression scale, like give us these details, right? And we will get clients that say, listen, I've been with my guy for 20 years. I love him. He's always done a good job, but he's just not bringing me strategy. Our response to that question if we bring the strategy, will he talk to us? Because you get some CPAs going, yes, please. Oh my God, thank you so much. Bring strategy because they get to learn it and then bring it to their clients. But you get others, well, I didn't know about that. And I don't think it's right. And crossing the arms and making smushy faces at you, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, they're not team players. Get them off your team because it's a team. It's not a one-man show. And anyway, my rant, my apologies. <laughs> Absolutely not. So please. <laughs> Why would you apologize? <laughs> Unapologetically. <laughs> right. Uh, because it is, it's your business, it's your life, and you need to take the bull by the horns and, and, yeah. <laughs> Get the man best up. people on your team that you can, right? But if I you're mean, a woman, listen, you got to man up. Woman up. I love it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, get, get the best people on your team that you can. Now, of course, when you're first starting, that's going to be hard. You may not have the money to hire a business coach and a lawyer and a financial advisor and a CPA and whatever. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Do the best you can. But I think one of the pieces that many business owners miss is they kind of fall into this rut that like, mm -hmm. oh, well, that's always worked for me. So I'm going to keep doing the same thing versus what what we we call it business reflection time. Okay at least once a quarter is what we recommend to all of our clients, at least once a quarter, do a business trip with yourself, okay? Yet, don't go to a fun place. I mean, you can go to a fun place, okay? But you need to set aside time to actually think about what are the goals of the business? Where am I trying to go? Am I with the proper team? Am I looking at the right things? Are there changes in the industry? Are there are these, these things happening that because you're in the day-to-day -day of your business that you're not actually seeing because you're just doing what you've always done? 
-hmm. Right. So, um, yeah. And, and part of that is making sure you have the right team. So. Well, yeah, and it totally depends on how somebody has set up their business. Obviously, if they go and they get public funding, they're going to be operating fiscally substantially different than somebody that's, you know, running off their personal credit cards to <laughs> make them set the business up and get it there. But at, at some point in time, the time comes when, in my experience, you need to have at least those four people in a room together. And if you're if you're not at the right stage, there are things you can do. There are people that will bring together a uh, a group of people and and have that um, discussion with multitudes of people. And you may say, hey, I can't afford to have you right now, but if I get 30 butts in seats, will you come to an hour long uh, you know, panel yeah. and and do that for me? And that your ability to get those people in front of an audience, is probably worth more than they would ever make by charging you for that time anyway. So, you know, if you got the wherewithal to be able to make it happen, make it happen because I, it's so valuable to understand, you know, you don't know from year to year what products are available. You don't know year to year what tax uh, options there are, what write-offs there are, what, what it, changes have happened. And all the changes aren't necessarily to your detriment saying you can't do this anymore and you can't do this anymore. Sometimes they actually say, oh, and now you can do this. <laughs> Yeah, rare, but yes, agreed, right? <laughs> yeah, and you know, I love your idea here, right? About like, you don't have to do all of this on your own. There are mastermind groups that you can join and pay a smaller fee instead of having a one-on-one -on -one coach. Um, there are tons, everybody puts on free webinars, free seminars, whatever. Uh, there's tons of information out there. The one, the one thing that we've seen problems with is what we call the TikTok effect, Okay. So, right. Well, you know, somebody will film a 30 second video on a tax strategy and I'll, I'll use it from my viewpoint here, right? Yep. 30 second video on a tax strategy, put your kids on payroll. So somebody does that, but they don't know about the 15 steps that if you don't follow every single one of these steps, you're going to be in trouble. So I'm all about as much education as you possibly can inspect what you expect right? So make sure that that information, yeah, okay, great. It's a good starting point, right? But go do your own research, talk, talk to your friends, talk to other business owners, talk to, if you have a mastermind or a business coach or whatever, talk to these people to make sure that you're not going down a, a dark path of TikTok, okay? <laughs> just, just be careful with free advice. So. You, you can use TikTok as kind of your abbreviated points on what you want to ask a professional. hundred <laughs> percent. That is it. not your... That is not your university degree in TikTok. Yeah, no, no. no. <laughs> awesome. So in a moment, I'm going to ask you about a Cinderella story or the best threesome you ever had. You got to wait and find out because we're going to hit pop. Are you running a business over seven figures but still struggling with technology headaches? Pay attention. You do not want to miss this offer. This podcast episode is brought to you by Awareness Strategies, who is offering a custom-built digital adoption roadmap for anyone running a business over seven figures who's wanting to grow their business in the next five years. And it's not just a roadmap. They offer full implementation as well. If that scares the out of you, check out awarenessstrategies.com forward slash roadmap for more details today. The link's in the show's notes. Don't regret not doing this. Do it now. That's awarenessstrategies.com slash roadmap. And we're back. So give us an example of an awesome Cinderella story. Or we can talk about threesomes. I'm good with that too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it is Valentine's. I don't know. Right. Uh, I will, make I will, shit up. <laughs> yeah. I will be professional. I will stick with the Cinderella story. Thank you. Okay. Um, so yeah. So, okay. Let's back up. The, the case that's immediately coming to mind. All right. Um, we've got a guy. So husband and wife. Okay. They are taking over the business from the father. Okay. So bigger business. I think they're doing about 150 million a year gross. Uh, taken home between the, the husband and the wife and then the father taking home about three million a year. Okay. Um, the, the son now owns about 80% of the business. So father's going to be out within the next couple of years. Okay. So mm -hmm. son is finally getting, wh what are we doing? How do we change things? How do we modify things? How do we update things? Right. Cause it's been mm -hmm. run a certain way for a long time, making good money, no arguments, but like, how can we, how can we make it better? Right. So establish business, but how can we make it even better? Okay. Um, when they first came to us, you know, a little bit of skepticism, right? Like, can you really, cause side note, our average tax rate is 6.92% for people. It's what our book's about 6% life. Okay. 
So he was paying between him and his father and wife, right? Paying uh, about 36%. Okay. So big chunk. And he's like, can you really, I mean, you seem really nice and you seem really smart and you have, right, have lots of initials after your name, but like really, 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 can you like actually get us down that low to 6%? And I'm like, okay, let's sort it out. Let's sort it out. Okay. So we hop on a call, they send over the tax returns, we analyze the tax returns, because it, it all starts with what did you do, and where are you trying to get to, right? That chessboard, okay, what pieces have you got, married, kids, the, the whole deal, okay? So we get the tax returns, we analyze the tax returns, come back to them and say, listen, here's the deal. In the one hour that we spent analyzing your tax return, okay, so the bill on three million between the three of them at 37, we we're about a million dollars in taxes, okay? Well, it's rough numbers, about a million dollars, okay? We were able to take that million in one hour down to about $200,000, okay? Right. Now, we don't know all the details, right? We're, it's only going to get better from here because the more information you can give to your strategist team, right, the better the outcomes, okay? Um, so they, they're like, oh, okay, you know, it's, it's a little expensive. What we do isn't cheap, okay? A little expensive, but there are ROI. So let's see, an 800000 they paid us about 80, so it's about a 10 times ROI just on what we found in the first one hour. Okay. So they come on board. Now, this is where it gets a little hairy. Okay. They came on board basically November 25th. It was right around the U.S. Thanksgiving. Okay. That means that we had to do all the things we had to do between November 20. Yeah, you're making the face between yeah. November 25th uh. and December 31st. Okay. Um, I warned them before, before they joined, I warned them. I said, you are going to work for me for the next month. When mama says jump, you say, how high man? And they yeah. both nodded and they said, okay, we understand, right? $800,000 is nothing to sneeze out. Let's, let's do it. Okay. By the time they finished everything that they had to do, and we had this additional information, we were able to get them down to 0%, zero percent, zero. We found something that they didn't know about. And we didn't know about until we got into it. That actually gave us that additional two hundred thousand dollars. We were able to knock it out. Done. They are paying nothing. This yeah. year. It's pretty awesome. Which brings up an awesome point: is that 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 white mark and that black mark that we were talking about earlier has nothing to do with the percentage of tax that you are paying. That was the other thing I heard there. And going, we, we got to talk about this because people think if they're not paying taxes that they're in in the black, and it's like 100%. no. You can be 100% in the white and not pretend taxes. Yes. Well, and let's talk about this. There's there's really two big pieces that come up from our standpoint, right? Yeah. One, I feel like it's my civic duty to pay taxes, right? There's there's an ethical, moral, I, I want to provide for programs. I want to do that. Everything that we offer to people, legal and above board, but it's your choice. If you don't want to do it and you'd rather pay, do it. Great, I'm in, right? If you want to get to 10% or 15% or whatever you feel legal, ethical, moral, whatever that you want to, it's your choice. It's your money. Do what mm -hmm. you want with your money, okay? And um, you can choose where that money goes and it's a tax write-off. I was just about to say, because that's the piece in the Cinderella example, that's yeah. the piece that we didn't know about when we first started. They oh. are highly charitable, highly charitable. They were giving away a mass, I think it was like almost 40% of their money that they didn't think was important to mention to us at the beginning of the thing. Okay. Yeah. What's so, the million between friends? You know, whatever. Right. So yeah. what we ended up doing was creating a special kind of trust where they could donate all of the money to the same charities that they wanted to do and their kids, when the trust, when they die and everything happens, their kids get all that money back completely tax free. So they're double dipping on the same dollar to the charity and to their heirs. Everybody was thrilled. This nice. this is the stuff that I just, I love. That, oh, this is the chessboard and the back end and the bits because we got to hit their goals. They wanted to be charitable and take care of the kids and save taxes. And we did all three. And I'm nice. like, uh, right? That's the You want to enjoy your thought. experience. You got to hit the holes. But you got <laughs> You got to do what you got to do, right? Uh, now, I will tell you, right? And and so definitely part of Cinderella, right? Cinderella had to push a broom for a little bit, right? Yeah. There, There is work. I Yes, I'm a goddess, but there's only so many waves of the magic wand I can do. Like you do have to do things to get these kinds of tax savings. But if you do, if you do what the goddess tells you, it will happen. So 
So I love it. So I know our listeners are going to want more from you. How did they start that journey with you? You are so sweet. I'm so glad to bring education today. All the fun that. Yeah, uh, yeah we're, we're pretty easy to find. Taxgoddess.com. Um, the, the process, pretty simple. Uh, book an appointment on the website. As you heard, we're going to collect tax returns. We're going to walk through a bunch of scenarios and get details and all those things. Um, and then determine both for you and for us, are we the right fit? Can we help you? And if we can't, we will make sure we get you to the right place. So. I love it. So I get to ask you, so how do you get it up and keep it up in business? Uh, for me, it's the number. It's the, it's the big, it's the big measurement stick. Uh, sorry. So, so far, so far, we have saved our clients um, a little over 1.21 billion in wow. tax savings, uh, which is more than the last reported GDP for the country of Monaco. So um, yeah, that's that's how I get it up and keep it up. <laughs> yeah, it's by getting the big O and it's the zero on the end of that number that keeps popping up. The big O is a zero. Um, exactly. Happens, happens more often than not. When I first started this, I was like, oh, maybe we can get people there. We can do, but now it's happening like in 50% of cases, we're getting people to zero, legally zero. Wow. And it's just letting people choose what they want to do with their money instead of handing it over to the government to maybe figure out what they should do with the money. Right. We're creating more jobs. We're helping people. It just makes my day. So Nice. I uh, love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I, I do want to still ask you, at what point in life did you know you're especially kind of crazy enough to think that you could become an entrepreneur? Oh, geez. Well, apparently it happened when I was like five, right? Um, as, as I mentioned, my mom is my goddess. And she used to tell me stories that when I was little, in specifically in order to train me to be independent and, and an outside thinker, when we were in a restaurant, she would send the little five-year-old to go bother the waitress to get the bill. Okay, so uh -huh. um, I think I have an odd feeling it was built in from from my goddess, my mom. So <laughs> cute pays for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Curls help, you know. So it's always good. So awesome! You have been awesome. Any last pillow talk for our peeps? Oh, um, make sure you have some reflection time with you yourself and your business. You know, a little, little dark, little candles, some roses. I don't know. Make make sure that you're happy with where you're going and what you're doing. So. Love it. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And I know how valuable it is. Aw, thanks for having me. Awesome. Peeps, this is Michelle Nedlock, your mistress in business. Thank you for being here with us today. Be sure to subscribe and invite your friends. You know how much we love a good threesome. Bring your friends. Talk to you next time. Help you get it up and keep it up. Thank you for listening to the Little Blue Pill for Business podcast with your mistress in business, Michelle Nedelec. Why are you still here? Go to littlebluepillforbusiness.com and get your goodies. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to share it with somebody else that you know would enjoy getting it up in business after you subscribe to the podcast, of course, so you won't miss any future episodes. Now, check the notes for links. Oh, and only tell your wife if she's into this, you know, entrepreneurship. And I'll see you both on the other side.